Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thanks. Did you just wake up? <laughs> nah, nah, I've been, uh, I'm kind of an early riser. I've been up for a couple hours. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. All right, well, thanks for taking the time to chat to us today. Well, tonight. Yeah, it's, no problem. It's night time here for us already. <laughs> right. <laughs> I guess the last time you were your amazing, amazing show at Cranked Up, um, and you mentioned that you felt um, honored to be to be playing in South Africa. So back for the second time, we're gathering that you kind of like our little neck of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, when we came there the first time, I mean, it was such a such a amazing opportunity. I mean, when you when you start out being in a band, you don't really envision yourself getting out of the garage, let alone or going to Africa, let alone getting out of the garage sometimes. So when we were there, I was just like, you know, it could have been, I felt like I was on the moon. <laughs> uh, it was just such a special place and meeting the people was, was super cool. And uh, when we were there at that point, uh, we spoke with Duncan, the promoter, about coming back sometime on the next album. And uh, he held up his end of the deal. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're excited to be coming back. Out of that trip, what was your highlight of that trip? Um, well, the show was great. I mean, the show was killer. But I think the meet and greet deal that we did the night before, just getting to meet the people and hear how the music had impacted them and their lives, I mean, that was pretty mind-blowing for us. Um, and we went on a couple wildlife excursions, which was pretty sweet, too. But I, I think the, the meet and greet, just getting actually to connect with the people and hear their stories and, and a little bit about their lives was super cool to us. Cool, I'm sure that was their highlight as well. Okay, so talking about Duncan, we love our good friends from Turning Tricks and Plug Music. Um, what was it like working with him? Oh yeah, he treated us wonderfully, it was awesome. Uh, yeah, we became decent friends with him over the last couple of years. He's just a super nice guy and uh, definitely passionate about music. So um, I've had some other friends now that I've got to work with him also and everyone just loves him. He's a great dude, so we're uh, excited to see him again. Cool. Um, anything that you didn't get to do on your last trip that you'd like to do this time? Uh, well, I didn't get to go to Cape Town last time. <laughs> the rest of the band did, actually, but I had to get back home. So uh, we're starting off in Cape Town this time, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that for sure because I... I heard how beautiful it was and I uh, saw a lot of the photos and things, so I'm looking forward to it. Cool. Okay. Um, I know you guys have just come off a pretty intense European tour um, and it seemed to be quite successful in terms of the sellouts of the actual gigs. Um, how did it go for you guys? I mean, uh, as I said, as you seem to have quite a few tour dates on there. I think it was 20, 20 odd tour dates in about a month's worth of touring. So how did it go? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was incredible. It was as good as it's ever been which is always a plus you know to still have it be as wonderful it is over there for us so um yeah it was a great tour uh selling out a bunch of the shows was super special and uh we went to a couple of places we had ne never been to before more of eastern europe we were in prague for our first time and slovakia for our first time so mm -hmm. that was uh that was super cool just because i mean we started touring in Europe in 1999, so sure. all these years later, hitting places that we haven't been to, and there's still plenty to hit, but uh, yeah, the, the European tour was super awesome. I'm still trying to catch up on the right clock. I, I wake up at 4 a.m. every day <laughs> thinking it's time to get up, and <laughs> it's not. <laughs> and so uh, eventually I'll get over this jet lag, which I don't really remember being such a, a task uh, in the past, but for some reason, um, I don't know, I think... I, I'm still reeling from the high of it all. It was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, um, when you guys are touring and touring a new album, um, how do you how do you balance the mix between playing new songs, which you want to obviously showcase on the new album, but then also bringing in old favorites and fan favorites and stuff? I mean, how do you guys plan that? How do you find that balance? How do you find that balance between playing, playing, you know, the new album and then those old fan favorites? Yeah, I mean, I think that when you're headlining, it's a lot easier because you got you have more time, so you can have a decent balance of the newer and the older stuff. Um, when you're supporting, obviously, you don't have that that time frame, so I think it becomes more difficult then. Uh, but 
You know, we're trying not to play more than five of the new songs, and it's mixed throughout, you know, 20 songs or something. We play about an hour and a half usually. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's not easy because, you know, somebody's going to be disappointed because yeah. we didn't play uh, X amount of songs, and, and usually it's a song that we haven't played in, like, 10 years or something that they'll say to us. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I think, we, I think we have a pretty nice balance of uh, old and new songs, and uh, I don't really see... We did have a part of the set where we were had two new songs back to back, and I could see the sort of energy of the crowd uh, kind of fizzle out right there. So we mm-hmm. sometimes when things like that happen, you kind of mix things around and, and put an older song in or something like that, and, and uh, you seem to be able to fix it pretty quickly. But I I did notice that on this tour that we were having to juggle a few things here and there, and, um, which is good. It's all a, it's all kind of part of that connection with the people and reading the crowd and things of that nature yeah okay cool um is there any song that you're really tired of playing after seven years (laughs) um boy well i would say that um we i mean probably our most popular song is sliver's theory and we end with it and it's not i'm not sick of playing it live because it's such a you get such a reaction when the first few notes start up and that's special but i would mm-hmm. never i never practice it with the guys we don't have <laughs> somebody's like yeah we should probably practice slit wrist we would all just like laugh at each other we did not <laughs> practice that song <laughs> it's getting played one too many times <laughs> yeah and you know this album obviously has a lot of meaning um behind it um again it kind of comes back to the old versus new songs how do you find people are receiving it in terms of what you guys put in in terms of the album and the energy and the meaning with it again trying to play that new song and maintain the energy of a set or a gig i mean are you finding people are receptive to it um yeah yeah. absolutely i mean i think when the record came out in september yeah we had been on the road for about two months before that trying to play those new songs just because it's super fun to play new stuff but knowing that no one had heard it and that's kind of the a gamble to do things like that. And, and we didn't just play one. We were playing like three or four of them at that point. Um, and we've always kind of done that. And, and you know, I see that it doesn't go over that wonderfully in, in the beginning. And that's kind of part of the growing pains of it. But then when the record came out and, you know, we were two or three weeks after the release and we'd be seeing people singing the words back. I mean, that's when it really starts to get special, I think. And um, now, like on this last European tour, I mean, it was super fun, like, Better to Burn uh, is one of the singles on the album, and, and that song really was getting an awesome response, and everyone's singing along. So uh, that, yeah, I don't know, you can't really sum it up into words sometimes what that feels like. But um, yeah, I think that the 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 time frame that, that those songs were written and where I was in my life, which wasn't a, a very fun time in my life, it was pretty dark, and I was going through some stuff for sure, and to be completely uh, removed from that now, um, I think that the the not that the meanings of the songs are any different, but the the feeling is different when I'm playing them live and I'm seeing the the connection with the people on those songs. the The dark moments kind of go away, and it's more of just say, you know, it's just more, I guess not really releasing or cleansing, but it is somewhat therapeutic to know that even though those songs were written about a pretty terrible time in my life, it's uh, it's just it's a constant reminder where not to go again, but it's also something that reminds myself of where I am now, and, and that feels pretty good. So it makes makes it, I think, uh, pretty rewarding to, to be playing them live now and, and having that kind of a spin on them. Cool. Thanks so much for sharing that. It's, uh, yeah. I think that's what makes live events so awesome is that you know every single yeah. song definitely has a connection and a meaning to you know everyone watching it. So yeah, thank you, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, you bet. Yeah. No, yeah. I think you're, the live atmosphere you just it, you can't uh, it's you try to capture that on on the, the studio albums and you just it's almost impossible to really capture it. So when you do get in that live sense, it's just totally different animal and it's it's a much better one yeah yeah 
for us as the audience as well. Yeah. I was I was in the front row last year, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll be there oh, again yeah. for sure. <laughs> the, the cool thing about these shows is they'll be, you know, club shows. So um, there's just a different vibe with that anyway. And yeah. A, a much more comfortable vibe for me personally anyway. And, and, and the whole band, it, you know, we just, we are a club band. And we do, we do the festivals all over, you know, over the years. But, yeah, I mean... We like the clubs better. I mean, who doesn't want to play to thousands of people in the big fest? But <laughs> I, I like the smaller rooms, the more intimate vibe. You can connect with people easier. Yeah. The crowd's closer, things of that nature. So I'm looking forward to these shows. Cool. So was there anything that you didn't pack last time that you've got to remember to add onto your packing list this time? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Let's see. Um, it's going to be autumn when you get us. So, like, I was trying to prepare I'm happy you for about that. that. Okay, yeah. But he's from Alaska. Yeah, Autumn's I'm nothing. About, I do not like the heat. <laughs> yeah. uh, my girlfriend actually lives in Johannesburg, and uh, oh, right. so she's she's tuned me in to okay. um, all the seasons and stuff. So I, I know it's going to be a lot cooler, which I'm uh, I'm very I'm really <laughs> <Okay>, good. <laughs> Um, so now 24 years the band has been around what is your biggest challenge now on touring as you get older uh, well you know a lot of us are dads now and uh, you know life has definitely changed as we get older and our responsibilities become different um, I think the biggest challenge is just you know uh, staying connected to home and trying not to miss out on too much uh, especially just, I mean, I have an eight year old daughter who's, um, heavily into hockey and soccer and I hate missing those things. So, uh, thank God for FaceTime, um, <laughs> get to, when you're on the road and getting that FaceTime a couple times a day or at least once a day has really helped me for sure. And I'm glad that we're touring in an age where we have that capability because in the early days we surely did. And, yeah. uh, well, in the early days I didn't have a kid, but <laughs> I, I just, I'm glad that we do have that technology now because I think it's been a lot very helpful for us. And I guess that'd probably be the only challenge. I mean, we're still having a, a wonderful time playing music together and and traveling the world and seeing all these new places. So, um, yeah, I would say the challenge is just is try not to miss too much at home. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of hockey, did you manage to watch any of the Olympic Games? Or were you caught up in the oh, yeah. euphoria of the U.S. curling men's team gold? <laughs> no, I didn't catch the curling, to be honest. But uh, that's that's wonderful for those guys. I, I really have watched curling over the years here and there, and I don't understand it. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, you know, because uh, guys with stones and a broom. I, I, yeah, yeah, there was a super funny bit on the radio the other day when I was driving around, and it was kind of making fun of the sport saying like you know these guys got to be super clean freaks always <laughs> clean and sweeping up and it was uh it was way better than what i just explained but it was pretty funny <laughs> um, but no yeah we watched all the hockey of course the men's uh u.s men's was a little disappointing but uh my daughter's hockey team uh all watched the u.s canada women's gold together at, at the uh at a little restaurant bar here so that was a lot of fun to get the kids together and have them uh, there's a lot of girls on my daughter's team. It's it's co-ed boys and girls, but there's about eight girls, so it was cool to see those girls, you know, that are now almost that are almost nine years old, and they're they just those those girls are their heroes. So uh, it, it was fun to watch all that. Awesome, awesome, man. Awesome, yeah. So many yeah. little girls kicking those boys' asses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm all for it. <laughs> Okay, well, that's about it from us then. I just wanted to ask if you have a special message for your SAFA fans who are waiting to see you again next month. Yeah, no, just uh, thanks for getting tickets and coming to see us. We're really excited to come back and uh, we're looking forward to the shows. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah. yeah, I hope you get your um, sleeping cycle back. <laughs> yeah, I will. So that Thank you're well you rested for us. I appreciate the coverage. Yeah. <laughs> anytime, man, anytime. Cool, and we'll see you when you are. You guys have a great evening. Cool. Cheers, mate. Keep Bye. Well. Bye. Bye.